Hey guys, I'm Zoe and I'm a third year medical student bringing to you the anatomy of the larynx. And in this part we are focusing on the cartilage that makes up the structure. This video and its partner, Membranes and Muscles, is aimed at medical student level and is more of a whistle stop tour than an all encompassing tutorial. But hopefully by the end of this video and the next you will understand what's inside the larynx and where to find it. I want to begin with an overview of the larynx. It sits at C4 to C6, which is right about here in the neck. It begins at the epiglottis and ends at the cricoid cartilage, right before the beginning of the trachea. The function of this organ is mainly phonation, manipulating air to produce different sounds, and also protection of the lower respiratory tract. Now moving on with the bony structure, and namely the hyoid bone. Okay, so technically the hyoid bone isn't part of the larynx, but it's pretty important to everything around it. It sits at C3 and interestingly is the only bone in the body which isn't articulated to any other. It provides attachment for lots of structures around it, including the larynx. There are three large pieces of cartilage that make up the larynx, the thyroid, the cricoid and the epiglottis. The thyroid cartilage is the largest of the three and the protruding part here is called the laryngeal prominence, also known as your Adam's apple. The cricoid cartilage sits at C6 and is the only one of the cartilages that is a complete ring. Lastly we have the epiglottis. The epiglottis functions to protect the airway from entry of foreign bodies during swallowing by moving over the laryngeal inlet. There are also three sets of smaller paired cartilages, arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. The arytenoids are important as they are the attachment for the vocal folds and ligaments. They are the largest of the three paired cartilages and are pyramidal in shape. The corniculate cartilages lie at the apices of the arytenoid cartilage. The cuneiform cartilages are small and lie anterior to the corniculate cartilages. Lastly, I want to briefly mention the joints of the larynx. There are two joints to mention, the cricoarytenoid and the cricothyroid. The cricoarytenoid joints are synovial and allow a good range of movement in the arytenoid cartilages. The cricothyroid joints aid in changing the length of the vocal cords, which in turn alters the pitch of the voice. Hopefully now you will be clear on the nine cartilages that make up the larynx. If you'd like to test your newfound knowledge, please take my mini quiz to see how much you know, and thanks for listening.